Good evening, Meat Suits. Welcome back to Read and Weep, a podcast about movies and friendship. This is season five, Kevin Bacon's Exquisite Corpse, and we are just four high school cheerleading bullies who are playing a year-long movie-watching game. I'm your host, Alex Falcone, recording, as always, from lovely Koreatown, North North Koreatown, Los Angeles. Um, I'm, the joke doesn't work to put North in the other end of it. Um, I'm joined, as always... <laughs> from southeast portland he's at anthony lopez part two on twitter and he can't be a princess he's still waiting for his normal body parts to come in it's anthony lopez shut up <gasps> oh I mean, how I know, I, dare you i, I froze <laughs> alex because i was literally gonna say that joke that i can't be a podcast host i'm still waiting for normal body parts to show up <laughs> and you just you stole it from me well like, this is my out of my mouth I, just, I was had, like right about to say it, and you just yanked it from me. I had them in reverse order. I was gonna have that one for Ezra, and then I was like, "This one's too good. Someone else might take it. I gotta put it first. Uh, the yeah, house always true. wins. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Um, messed up, man. Also joining us, he's the co-host of the Old Gamers Almanac podcast from the woods of Brooklyn. He saw me when I was invisible. It's Hunter yeah. Donaldson. Yeah, you you bet, you bet. Uh, I had to take my tiara off uh, in order to put my headphones on, which is a shame. This actually, I was excited about this episode because I do wear a tiara. You see me in the street, I wear tiaras. With in it? Oh, yeah. Every day uh, I wear a tiara. Um, it's just my favorite accessory, and it's just a shame how often I have to put these headphones on and take the tiara off. Bummer. I like, you I like a, the movie yeah. posits that like people are, she's so invisible that people sit on her, but also her four-foot-wide frizzy hair is so... Astounding yeah. and noticeable that everyone talks about it all the time. Yeah. She's a girl of contradictions. Yeah, she yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. is. Yeah. She's like a rock climbing uh, yoga girl, but not like a softball yeah. girl. You guys oh, yeah, right. about the about... rock climbing scene. Yeah. Yeah. Athletics and hand eye coordination almost kill her. Also right. joining us around at the panel, he's in Northern California. He's going to be our resident San Francisco expert for this episode. And it looks like it's raining out, but it never comes down on Ezra Brown. It's Ezra Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a you know between a waltz and a tango it, it, it is a, it is a wango this wango is like a wango in the entire <laughs> time combo classic wango before we start uh, the show today i want to thank um a couple of meat buddies i oh, thank all of our amazing meat buddies who keep the show going down the floating down the tracks but especially today i want to thank gabriel who we'll hear more about in an upcoming episode and i also want to thank you I can't wait for you guys to hear about this oh, a tease about sean who we're going to talk about more later so um, we have we have a lot of sean to talk about so are these teases do these wow. people take on the double guilt Wait until you find out. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, you Alex, have to stick around at the end to find Alex, out. Alex, oh. just, just down here tickling her balls. I don't like it, right? <laughs> Fucking give us the thing a Weird. don't. Um, you, well, you'll see. You'll see what Sean has to say at the end of the episode. If you guys want to join them and get wow. your own tickle tees, you can go to metreon.com. I was nope. cautious. We will I, not I, be I went... tickling for money, okay? <laughs> we will be doing no tickling for cash, all right? I no, mean, you pay us and anyway. we tickle ourselves. That's how it works. Listen, I don't... you give money yeah. to the Patreon, you get a tickle gift, okay? Guys... The tickling is a gift. All right, Have IRS? You guys... <laughs> um, you guys ever seen that documentary, Tickled? No. I haven't seen it. I want to see it. Is it about it's tickling? Very... Well, it's about uh, the world of competitive t- competitive tickling. Oh, no, that's um, not a world. They're making up well, no, new it worlds is a world. to make documentaries no, no. about no, it. Why isn't it a world? All no, right, no, no, you no. can have a world about anything. No, well, let me, I, Alex. Alex, oh, I like this. I, oh, no. I want to say, Alex, good instincts, buddy. Oh, it's okay. Not a world. That's <laughs> that's the point of the documentary. Is this oh, guy gets funny. He, he finds this ad for competitive professional tickling, thinks it's weird, gets involved in it just to like, because he's a journalist. Mm-hmm. And the rabbit hole goes so deep on the weirdo who's behind this and why he does this, and it's a fascinating. But yeah, good instincts, Alex. Your cynicism often, I feel like, might hurt you, but you no. will never get sucked into wow. a scam you you like competitive tickling. Yeah, it was funny. I mean, God. coming from you, I believe yeah. it less. There's something about the way you delivered that that sounded scammier than the way other people might have. I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of a shame that you hear competitive tickling and right away you're just like, must be fake. You know what I mean? <laughs> something that sounds so pleasant, you can't even it believe it in this to you? world. It doesn't yeah. sound pleasant. Competitive at all. tickling? Yeah. No. It great. It's Being crazy. tickled is the worst thing in in the world. It's, it's not tried that actual bad. torture. 
That's worse for well, sure, but, right? But what yeah, makes there's a lot of worse emotionally things. so much worse is that it causes your body to make it a joyful sound that is incongruous with how you feel, mm. and that's bullshit. No, that's what makes it funny. That's the <laughs> hilarious part. <laughs> it's the dissonance mm. of oh, your body you. having anyway, such a good time. You, if you want to participate in this bodily dissonance, <laughs> you can donate to us by going to Metreon. Listen, com. I could be tickled. I'm fine with being tickled. Okay, I don't really, mind. This it at is all. you begging us to tickle you. There's yeah. no other interpretation yeah. of this. Fly over, okay. <laughs> Okay. There's a lot of the day left. You could get here, all right? Wait, let me let me look something up. The guy behind competitive tickling in the documentary. Was his name Donaldson? Hunter Donaldson. <laughs> Weird. Weird. How dare you say my world is not detail. real? <laughs> it's I'm always offended. a competition. I win every time. Oh, yeah. man. Anyway, Patreon.com, we really appreciate everybody who supports our show. And as you know, um, we had our guilt amnesty months just wrapped up. It is now May. It's double guilt May. So when you donate now, you have to feel twice as guilty for not donating earlier. What a sales pitch. Metreon.com. We appreciate <laughs> everyone who does the show. All right. It's time for the news. Um, first, I just want to make a quick update from last week. We were talking about being on, uh, on, on YouTube now. You can see our faces while we talk. The experiment continues. This week will also be visible on YouTube. We got some bonus YouTube jokes. When Hunter was talking about being tickled, fingers close to the camera that was like a bonus 3d people like watch 3d show <laughs> also kind of a, a fun uh, bit of commenting happening on the youtube page that i really like one comment i want to draw your attention to is from um favorite commenter on all platforms robin wrote in to say yes. i refuse to watch a youtube video without some circles and arrows on the thumbnail or at least uh, somebody yeah. making a shocked facial expression overlaid <laughs> I mean, on a misleading block of red text Whoa. i do like yeah. that i mean I, this I misleading this week, mediocre thumbnail to- just the thumbnail this, face. This, this mediocre thumbnail doesn't even have a pop culture icon photoshopped with nightmare eyes. No commitment to the craft. Zero of ten. Hey, hey, wait. I just got to throw this out here. So I do all the thumbnails for the Space Cats Peace Turtles YouTube. Mm-hmm. Not because I have to, because I actually love making really for the bad love of the YouTube game? thumbnails. Yeah. I love making YouTube thumbnails. It is even the best YouTube thumbnail is the most simple shit in Photoshop that basically anyone can do. I will totally make thumbnails for us. Starting this week, we're also going to have new upgraded professional tickler. Hunter Donaldson is going to make you, Robin. You just got me a new job. YouTube. Yeah. You know (laughs) what, Robin? I wish I could like, subscribe and share that comment. Yeah. (laughs) You can at least like Um, hit us up uh, youtube.com slash Alex Falcon you can get all um, not Ring all of our episodes bell. three of our episodes with our, all of our faces I need to take the green screen down when we record because it just looks like using it yeah, yeah because it just makes me look dumb I think because um, I could look like a per- well that in the microphone it looks like somebody who's got some twitch stuff going on but isn't doing it, it today like, that's not what I want to look and like you and know I can just we... throw it I don't even it have looks to pack light. it up. I could just throw it. It looks like one of those collapsible ones. Is that real? It is collapsible, but I, I get I get freaked out when I try to collapse it. I think I'm gonna break my own thing. That's like oh, that's me. my favorite. I have a yeah. like a light reflector like that, and my favorite part of it is crunching it down and then going. <laughs> when it pops <laughs> well, back out. that part is fun, but I always feel yeah. like I when I pack it up, I'm like I'm doing this wrong. I must be doing this wrong. It feels <laughs> wrong. It just feels yeah, right. wrong. I I, I want to just throw this idea yeah. out there because you said we only have three episodes up now on mm-hmm. the on the YouTube, including this one big, assuming big this one works that catalog yes so i think you know if someone wants to like donate some time or money mm. we can either one reenact or i say oh my god we use deep fake technology <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's better <laughs> all right i mean we could we, definitely get one of those programs that does like a cheap animation thing yeah we could do yeah. just fake or we or, could do or shallow fake. yeah we don't even have to go deep let's do a shallow fake yeah. which is just like south park style cartoons of our faces yeah and then we just throw the audio behind it. maybe Love on it. you guys i want fucking luke skywalker and right, Boba yeah, yeah. Fett, deep <laughs> fake uh, quality is young mark hamill myself. the whole time yeah that's <laughs> I what i, I want we could all be mark hamill's so i think that's fine with four yeah. four, young, four mark young mark hamill's having the same discussion we were having anyway these are good ideas i want to be joker mark hamill though that's oh yeah we're all a different mark hamill Oh, oh, that's Mark interesting. Hamill. Okay. There's so I wanna many. Be, there's I wanna be, so many Mark yeah. Hamels, you know. I want to be post co crash Mark Hamill when he had to get his face fixed. So that's okay, why he looks fine. different. We'll do a pre, a pre yeah. and a post. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Star, Star Wars post. New Hope. Yeah. I want to be the villain, uh, Mark, cartoon Mark Hamill from uh, the, the video game uh, Full Throttle. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool pool. Pool. Yeah. Pool. Yeah. Pool. Cool pool. Cool pool, cool pool on YouTube. Okay. All right. I'm gonna be <laughs> since we all get to pick one. I'm gonna be Mark Hamill from his guest appearance on What We Do on the Shadows. 
um, as Jim the Vampire. Whoa! I didn't mm. know he was on that. It was he. He's a. Uh, it's great. It's it's the best episode of that show that's ever happened. It's one of those show episodes where just like it has nothing. It like leaves the show for a day and then comes back, mm. and it's just one of the. One of the vampires leaves New York to go be a bartender in a small town in Pennsylvania wow. um, named uh, Jackie Daytona. Yeah, Jackie Daytona. Anyway, and Mark Hamill shows up and it's really fun. And it's like, holy hell, it's Mark Hamill. That's great. All right. He anyway, seems that's what like I'm a do. cool guy. He okay. does well, seem, well, well, Hamill seems like a cool guy, right? I like Mark. He seems nice. Yeah. And this will sound even funnier coming from Mark Hamill's face. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a bunch of Mark Hamill compliments. <laughs> All right. The other thing I want to say, Hamel the other thing we're going to do, <laughs> the four Hamels. Drop the Hamel. That's all right. Yeah, drop the. Hamel. Okay, none of this sucks. No, this we're nice. out. Cut this part. Uh, okay, but we're gonna get, we're gonna jump to. It's also Hamel sort of YouTube sickle. related. YouTube related is we are going to. Um, oh, yeah. We're gonna watch. We're gonna do our a, a live react, a, a minute and forty seconds long live react to the just dropped last week um what avatar the way of water teaser trailer so um you guys know remember you remember uh, avatar from 15 years ago and how everyone was like boy i really would like five sequels filmed at the same time for yep. that movie yep well it's finally you're getting your wish your dream is coming true um anthony is very excited about this movie i am not but he's gonna i have not watched the trailer he has so we're gonna watch the trailer together um I'm going to do my best to give you a little bit of descriptors so you can hear, you know, what's going on when you're just listening. But if you're, you're, if you're somewhere, if you're not driving, you know, maybe pull out your phone, sync it up, watch this trailer with us. Yeah, I think this watch, would be a good time. Watch it with us. All right. So we are going to watch Avatar, The Way of Water teaser trailer. Tell me when to start it. Yeah, Starting ready. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so you know we got the little production logos. Yeah, what's happening? It was green. Oh, they're still blue and lanky, and they're jumping over some moss. Mine crashed. Yours crashed. <laughs> okay, the we're going. CG we're going. rendering is too powerful for your browser. Does this look better than it used to, or the same? This looks, this looks the same. The this same. looks it much looks better. Same. Okay, what? if you actually look at the we detail, got differing well, opinions I mean, on that. Ten years of technolo technological advances. I mean, I mean it this should look better, but I'm saying it looks similar to me. Anyway, yeah. um there's so some it's... shots. There's a shot coming up uh here with a hand in water that is Okay. So coming this anyway, but all we're seeing is just various tall blue people walking around, flying yeah, around. There's some things with tw twice as many wings. This is a teaser, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The thing that annoys me about this is that the, it's it's the type of teaser where there's a lot of reverence for it built in, and I don't, I don't really. I don't yeah, know. there's it's very reverential music, and then we're just seeing blue people doing blue people it, shit. It's not a make me oh. care about this thing. It's a we know you care about this kind of thing, mm. which is a little tough for me. It's tough because I don't think anybody does. Even Anthony, well, you, you're excited to see this movie, but you can't Cameron say that, that you're like just really dedicated to the avatar world no and you're like I mean, oh what look, a finally we get to see these people again look, look I've i cared about I, stupider I, things than this i think this will be fine yeah i i <laughs> saw that trailer and i was a little bummed out that this is how james cameron's spending his time but at the same time <laughs> i i am a big james cameron fan i i think he is he is probably the greatest to ever do what he does I, at his level in terms of like Four quadrant, big blockbuster filmmaker. Sure, sure. He's easily the greatest to ever pick up a camera. He's, hey, he's the best at something I don't really care that much about. Yeah, but I yeah. will grant it to you but, that he's very good at it. But if you like the craft of filmmaking, he's such a fascinating guy. Um, okay. But yeah, the fact All that these this things is what are true, he wants to but do. More, I think more important, Anthony, that was kind of a boring minute and 40 second segment it, from it us. It actually really yeah. was. I think we just went, oh, okay. I was hoping there would be something that'd be like what, or that would be there worth was, talking about. Yeah, it see, just that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like I was expecting a trailer with some sort of hook that was going to mm, be like whoa, or right. Make well, me there's ask nothing, nothing about something. the plot. All this is is yeah. like remember blue people. You remember blue it's people. The tone piece. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Piece, it's just it's that got, the blue people are back and they're still blue. They had like 160 million views in a week, huge, or the first few days. Right. It's been really. I think there is a hype. For this movie, I think a lot of people are very cynical sure. about this movie still because of the first one. Uh, I think you know, 
because of the quality. <laughs> because the of the explanation of why people no. would be cynical about a sequel is because Listen, of the people, first one. A lot of people I mean, are hyped. Some people are not hyped because of the movie. Because you know. they've seen well, not, the movie. Not because of the, I mean, what, what I think is so interesting about Avatar, like I said, I'm really not yeah. too... Like, I think Avatar is one of the worst James Cameron movies. But like mm-hmm. the worst James Cameron movie is still like better than what most filmmakers ever make, right? Sure. Um, And I, I think... Yeah. I can I think tell you what I like about Avatar. I like one exactly one thing about Avatar. Was it the part where their hair has sex? I like that that James Cameron makes CGI when when James Cameron is going hardcore CGI that the camera is still a real camera and not a fake camera. Or like as in the digital camera behaves like a real camera would. They're like rules yeah, yeah. that he's imposing on it. Mm. So for example, like in a Marvel movie, let's say you have superheroes flying around. The camera just does whatever the, it fucking wants to. Right, because it's CG, the camera yeah. will just like shoot up 30 yeah, feet Yeah, the camera instantly. can shoot through like yeah. a, like the moon or whatever. It doesn't right. matter. But James Cameron in a CGI scene will pretend that the camera's on like a helicopter, even though it isn't, because none right. of it's real. And right. still sort of behave like well, a real it's camera a cop- would. It's a helicopter, but it has a protector around the blades because it's the future. Aha! Uh-huh. Just like we saw in that trailer. Yes. Do you, do you think that James Cameron has an advantage in terms of camera work because it's in his name? I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you could hear in the way I pronounced it that yes. I was thinking it was James Cameraman. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. Cam- Cameron. I think having camera in his name made him more dedicated wait, to the James crowd. Cameron, how would you not rebrand your cameras to be Camerons, right? <laughs> Like that seems like such a better he might idea. Sell his own own special James Camerons. He might. Of, he might. I I know. Look, I I I am. Uh, I I think I'm here for this because I like. I there's no way this is going to be nothing, right? Like there, this would not be like this is like he's not phoning this in clearly, right? And like I I like this of like someone dedicating so much time to a thing. Like I want to see it either way. Yeah. Like it's not going to be. Yeah. I mean, I, the thing I, that I felt like with the first movie was like this is a really. It's a nice looking movie and they probably should have hired a writer at some point, but that's not his thing he's into. It's not like about character or story or dialogue. Yeah. It's really about looks and camera moves and See, stuff. I, I very much moves. disagree with that. the, the camera on moves. The it's thing like, that James Cameron he does. I don't think a lot of people kind of misconstrue. I think what he is trying to do as like, not, like needing a writer. I think what he's doing is something that I kind of respect him for is that he makes the ultimate four quadrant movies right he makes well, movies I that are designed to work because my fifth quadrant is being unfulfilled here but i'm I mean, in a what quadrant I mean is... that this is missing so i feel like it four quadrants feels like yeah. out of four <laughs> five quadrants out of four i think he's missing but... my quadrant which is like an interesting story where stuff matters but i think he does have that i just think he tells his stories in a way that are like designed to work Literally from like nine years old to ninety years old, anyone sure. can get something out of it. Right? It's not trying. It's not I like have most loved people... James Cameron movies. This yeah. was like a cheese fest. This was like every almost every line made me roll my eyes for yeah. an entire movie, and the world is so uninteresting. Even though it's good looking, there's nothing in this world that was like, boy, I really want to find out if those miners destroy Home Tree, yeah. like. There was nothing about this. Wait, guys, can I can I really quick, can I give you my my seeing Avatar in the theater story? Yes, Real yeah, please. please. Okay, yes, we, please. we do have to move on from the segment. Okay. So let's make this close to the Because I forgot about this. When he said Home Tree, I forgot about this. So um, you know, there's a really good theater. It's closed down, but basically this is like um in Marin, this is the theater that um uh when my dad worked at Lucas, they would show like the, the screeners at um this is like it's like one giant, really well THX uh thing. Cool. Um and so that's where we saw it. It was great. There's a line around the block to get in. Um, everyone's loving it. Um, and at the part when Home Tree explodes, the film just stops, basically. <laughs> uh, and, so as if it was being projected by the Home Tree. Well, <laughs> no, and there was like, what's going on? And there's like, sorry, there's like a glitch in the file. We're, just, we're gonna redo it, okay? Uh, and then just go back and you go like, you know, five minutes back. And so we get to see Home Tree explode again. 
and, and then, then it stops, stops again. again. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 With this... personal files. I've never had it at a movie theater. And this is the thing. Wow. Like, okay, one more time. We're gonna, we're, I think we got. Yeah, we just got to get a running and start. At it. That's what the file needs. That's or how, what? That's how, how MP4s it. work. Is you just <laughs> need a running start at the glitch. And so we did it one more time. Home tree explodes again and stops. And we're like, we got this like, <laughs> basically a turnover return of the same uh, of like you know, it's like it empties out, meaning of home tree dying. Um, yeah. And we all got like comped basically. It was like, okay, look, we give up. Uh, I guess they like we'll, we'll figure it out later. Come back at any time. We'll, we'll, we'll make it. You got to skip ahead a minute. Uh, you, it never works to go backwards on no, a file corruption. Never. You have to go forward past never. the corrupted part. Um, yeah, the, the, that part is corrupted. You can't, yeah. <laughs> That's wow. hilarious, though, I that it was like it such a, a dramatic moment. And you guys got to do it until you were numb. <laughs> <laughs> I felt nothing for Home Tree. All well, right, that's Anthony, just how the movie ends. So you, you get go. the last word on it. Um, this is for you. Um, tell me one la- like last takeaway from w- of Way of the Water trailer. Uh, I, I think the... I'm I'm excited to see what James Cameron does for another movie. I just think uh, I just personally uh, like to look at history and look at things that have happened before to think about what's going to happen next. And I just personally think that especially people who bet against James Cameron with a little indie company called the Walt Disney Corporation behind him now making sequels, which is something he is notoriously bad at doing. Um, that anyone think this movie could possibly fail? Uh, I, I, yeah, I just I'm, think I'm, it's gonna be fucking awesome. It's not gonna I fail. It's gonna I think it would be fascinating if it failed because it was so expensive and he already oh, has the next so two wonderful. made. It would be it, really interesting, but I do Anthony, not think it you will have fail. to accept that it's actually more interesting if it fails, like that, because of that. all of the betting on this. Like mm. this, this guy has put everything on this franchise. I think Los that, Angeles will close. If yeah, this yeah, movie this like made it eighty five bucks the first what weekend, what a more exciting outcome! Uh, for sure, not possible. They will I, most I yeah, do certainly think they succeed. would eat Mick. I mean, they would just for food, <laughs> for sustenance. Like it's over. Huh. Yeah, um, I just. I mean, no, no, you you're right. like I, said, the... I said you were gonna get the last word, and then I wanted to talk afterwards. But you're right. That's your last word. No, it, it's stupid to bet against Cameron, Disney, it and is. sequels for hundred um, percent agree. Anybody, but especially for him. You're right. All right, let's jump into our anchor segment today. It's time to play the game. talking about The Princess Diaries, the 2001 coming-of-age comedy film and pro-monarchy commercial based on Meg Cabot's young adult novel of the same name that came out like six months before the movie, so they did not waste a lot of time. It's directed by Gary Marshall, you know, the guy who made all those ensemble comedies based on holidays that didn't have movies named after them yet. That guy. That- that's got to be a great, not the making movies on, you know, Gary Marshall was just pumping them out at the end, but to write a book and before it even gets to the print, Walt Disney is knocking on your door being like, hey, yeah. uh, hi, can we make your, your book into a movie? I uh, didn't dive into this, but I wonder if it was like they sold Disney on the pitch or something early on because um, it's just so clearly like it, I the story is so perfectly a Disney Channel movie that I don't know how it was ever a book first, like why it even had to be. Um, apparently I mean, also... Maybe- She's got a half sister, and there was a series of spinoffs books for her. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of these books. There's so many I know of them. This, this wow. series has become very, very big. But wow, um, I know this was like Whitney Houston's production company. That yeah, produced Whitney this Houston brought this, this to Disney. Um, but yeah, it is. It's it so was perfect kind of fun for them. Watching, yeah. watching this last night because I, I do think this is a pretty fun movie. Uh, well, but hang it on, is hang definitely. On. I'm not even finished with the yeah, credits yeah, let, yet. Let, let's get the synopsis oh. done. Okay. Also, I didn't like it. Let's get into this. Well, okay, well, so uh, and we could tell because that's the thing that that's what I love about you, Alex, is that you have no you have no like neutrality. If you didn't like the movie, you find out the second you do the summary because you bake in your <laughs> not take. even in the summary, just in the like it's description. the most corrupt way you can yeah. do it. Like, there's not a more corrupt way to do it, and it's so I, it's like it take, has monarchies. Okay, but let me can finish I take the a can I take it's, a swing on what you dislike about this movie, Alex? Yeah. Is it all the politics in your <laughs> your your Disney child girl <laughs> wish fulfillment movie about a girl who is blood makes her royalty, which is fine. But then woke Disney had to go and put a bunch of political messages in the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All this SJW save the planet. <laughs> no, I think I get think... woke 
Go so, broke. So, I mean, I know you're joking. My problem is more the other way, actually. But also, like, the monarchy, the princess stuff is annoying. But also just that the movie forgets <laughs> to do any emotional work or tie any of the scenes together to other scenes. But that's not important. The important part is that it's starring Anne Hathaway, Julie Andrews, Mandy Moore, Fat Louie as himself, and most importantly, Jeff Mikalski, who is allegedly in this uh, movie, just like he is allegedly in the cable guy. He's not in this movie. He's a basketball guy in the cable movie. In, in the cable guy. Uh, one of the yeah, basketball He's friends. in Princess Diaries 2. He's no, no, not he, in this movie. He's absolutely. He is one he of the Scottish. In movie. He's in the Scottish, uh, a Scottish prince at the, at the dinner Wait, scene. Wait, is he the one that sort of looks like Tim Robinson, but like kind of big, like a big Tim, like a chunky Tim Robinson? Could be. Sure. Like a beefy Robinson. <laughs> what does this guy look like? He I mean, looks, he does look kind of big. Um, he is listed in the IMDb as being in this movie, Anthony. Um, so he gets credit for that. Um, but he also is like a guy who's like in a million movies as like very, very like brief periods of time, I think mm-hmm. is one of the things. So anyway, um, good IMDb, but not a lot of things that I've actually seen um, or where I would recognize him. He looks like a dude, but um, yeah, Second City stuff. Uh, so I'm... sorry, I tried to mute myself instead. I ra- raised my hand as I yeah, coughed. Yeah, that I wasn't saw helpful. That. <laughs> Is that going to hey, be on the video? Everyone, Is that gonna be on the I'm going to cough. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. So uh, and this, by the way, this was my choice of movies this week um, because Ezra made me. So that's how free choice works. Um, we moved here via Jeff Mikowski from the Cable Guy, which Ezra picked on my behalf, and now mm-hmm. I picked this on his behalf, which I'd picked one on his behalf before that so it's really like two to one anyway now it's time for the summary of this movie that everybody is so excited about that's alex he'll do the nice thing for you but he won't let you forget he did it right. he's got to, <laughs> gotta get the credit you gotta keep gotta get the credit all right so gotta here's my the synopsis yet. are we doing the synopsis still here's my five i haven't even started here's my patented <laughs> five se- sentence or five point micro summary of the movie the princess diaries from 2001 Mia Thermopolis is a gawky but absurdly rich teenager living in a converted firehouse in San Francisco that costs probably 50 grand a month with okay. her mom, <laughs> who is a terrible painter and going to San Francisco and buying classic cars. Go ahead, okay, Ezra. That's totally true. 2001 San Francisco is very different than now to San Francisco. So this yeah, is like, yeah, I, I should, is yeah. now 50 yes. grand a month is an Airbnb yeah. party home. Oh, come exclusively. on. It, it was expensive then, too. Come no, on. Okay, this is, I don't. Okay, I don't fully remember, but like dot like if if they're like if they're south of market, like in two thousand one, that is like, uh, like like um like it's a little fuzzy geography like geographically where they are, but like there definitely does not have to be like this this could not be like a a, a fancy yeah. places. Do you guys ever feel like movies really made your house feel like a piece of shit? Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I, Watch they were dedicated to it. Even being poor, like you would see like poor families in movies and they would still be living in like renovated fire stations or like yeah. fancy tree houses. And it's just like, man, this fucking condo sucks. Yeah. I fucking hate it here, mom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we had zero fireman poles and she had at least was- two. <laughs> that was, okay, sorry. Back to I you. I didn't even have a secret tower I could run. I, yeah. I do I think upset. Ezra that you probably could, with a like a a, a brief bit of bingling, you could probably figure yes. out exactly where this is because it's a converted fire station, apparently. Right. Like, it's, so, supposedly. it's a good point. It's a good point. Um. All right. So a yeah, couple weeks a before Mia stage. Thermopolis's 16th birthday, her grandmother, who she's never seen before uh, since her dad left and then died in some order, shows up in town and tells her that she's the only heir to the throne of Genovia, a completely realistic sounding european country at first she's hesitant and feels betrayed by her family for keeping a secret from her for her entire life but then five minutes later she forgets about that because she's having fun pretending to be a princess she gets trained um and training for the genovia independence ball an event held in san francisco for some reason that is so crucial to the functioning of the country that if a princess does not show up to that ball well enough dressed the entire country is handed to two german aristocrats (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i love it basically yeah. genovia is like the shit's creek of countries yeah yeah like, it is so insanely run well they no just prepares. give it to two german people yeah. right <laughs> right of course i mean what's the problem what's yeah. the issue here all right yeah. so she goes to princess lessons that turn out to be easy and it doesn't matter she gets her curly hair straight <laughs> because 
Um, that means she's hot now. She goes from being unpopular to popular to unpopular and then popular again. Gets chased by the paparazzi, which is you'd expect for a movie that has Princess Di in its name and mm. came out a few years after Princess Di's death. She hits a home run off the third baseman's nuts, which means that she doesn't have to fill <laughs> gym class. And then she decides, because that was the only thing. Her gym teacher stood next to her and was like, if you hit a home run, you pass. If not, you fail. That was because ridiculous, this, yeah. This movie was made by someone who had heard about high school, but never actually oh my seen God. one in real life. It was it in Alex, the, inside like, the park. Well, no. Home run. Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall like, went to high school in 1862. Okay, <laughs> okay <sure>. he does <laughs> ever, not know no, what this, modern this high school. Everything like. you're noting is strange. This is all strange <laughs> stuff. But is it not possible that maybe that this movie is possibly a comedy, and that <laughs> the only it, things it, aren't it supposed like a to make you laugh? Where the central setting. They were like, we fed an AI every high school that's ever existed, and this is what it told us high school is like. Right. There's a dryer's soft serve ice cream machine. That was machine. the coolest thing. Okay. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Outside. No, that's Outside. something. I watched, I watched this with someone who, like, I stopped on that. I paused the movie and was like, whoa, look at that. And uh, she was like, yeah, no, I had that at my in the car, Not even inside, an outdoor, outdoor soft serve machine. Yeah, she knew exactly what was up with oh that, which I found God. also insane. a very insane. fancy private school. Completely you know? insane. It is expensive, yeah. but she's still, yeah, anyway, the point is that she went from being rich to being rich and famous, and then was like, I prefer just being rich, and then was like, okay, I'll also be famous again. <laughs> anyway, then she just suddenly remembers to be nice to her ugly friends before the ball, um, which goes fine, and then she quits school at 16 to run a country that admittedly didn't seem like it needed a lot of oversight, but it's certainly going to do poorly under her rule. And uh, that's it. It's Jeez, every Alex. step of a Disney you channel you'd think, expect in order. Alex, you probably think this athletes is what you need do. to go to college before they go to professional <laughs> sports too, don't you? Jeez. Alex, because... <laughs> If because you want to you go straight cold. from high school to ruin a country, if you got the talent, yeah. you should be able to do it. <laughs> you should be right? able to do it. You say okay. she should, should like have... just go into the into the Kobe queen didn't draft. Go to college right away. Yeah. She's yeah. eligible for the queen draft. At yes, 16. exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, I, I, think, I think amateurism in the monarchy space is the key to keeping the monarchies alive. <laughs> anyway, um, look, all of those things that are ridiculous, I was on board to like, but then they just like forgot basic plotting and structure to keep it going i was here yeah. for the weirdness okay i was trying yeah. to have a good time but everybody's emotional situation is just like remember how i felt last scene that doesn't exist anymore every one of them is just turning on an emotional dime nothing matters from scene to scene like i was so open to loving this movie in the first yeah. half and then yeah. it really just started to be like what is even what am i what See, am i supposed I, to care about here I, Who, it feels what is like it feels like I a lot was cut this. from this movie, is yes. what yes. I think happened. There's I think a lot true. of deleted yeah. scenes. Yeah. Yeah. It feels on, like it's um, missing a lot of sinew. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of deleted scenes on Disney Plus with Gary yeah. Marshall giving a little, ah, I'm Gary Marshall. Let me tell you why I cut this scene. Like, oh, speak before I and after. Watch yeah. episode. They're very funny. Um, but I have to say, I, I had never seen this movie before. Yeah, I had not uh, either. And either. seen it here. Awesome. Um, there's a few things that I think would bug me but this is the type of movie that really gets by on i think performances mm -hmm. like, yeah. yes and hathaway is legitimately amazing especially like her first role she's really really good and then julie andrews and uh hector elizondo yes. mm -hmm. who one the fact that like after i watched this movie i leaned over to my wife and i was like doesn't it feel like the hector elizondo julie uh, andrews romance was something that they didn't even know the cameras was filming. It was something they were floating <laughs> yeah, on yeah. set. They just and made it up. Yeah, that is literally what happened. All of that wasn't in the script, but during wow. the, well, of able, in the script because it's insane from a story but, standpoint. But their but chemistry the, is good. Yeah, Why during is it the insane? table read, what's insane about it? The queen of this country is just gonna like There's publicly like, have a fling with her driver in this country, Alex. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Fine. come on. Yeah. Give her some space. It would to be pursue so somebody. She's been wearing black long enough, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that but was yeah, for so, her son dying, wasn't it? Uh no, her husband also died. Well, presumably. Yeah. Um But yeah, like he during the table read, they just were very flirty with each other. And they liked that so much that they were like, Oh, we should have them be together by the end of the oh, movie. Oh, that's yeah. That's which great. is awesome because it like there's no 
pretty much no dialogue about it. It's just all looks at the actors are getting. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, it's a few it's of rare. them have such good chemistry. I mean, you're, uh, you're exactly right about the performances. This basically like launched Anne Hathaway. It brought Julie Andrews out of retirement, um, and like her, those two and and uh, Hector are all wonderful on screen. They're great. Mm-hmm. The story and the plot and the writing is not awesome. It doesn't make a sure. ton of sense, but sure. all of them keep it from being. They're the reason this is a movie and not a TV hour long Disney Channel movie because the yeah. writing feels like a Disney Channel movie. But then you like put these incredible like I'm against monarchies. But if Julie Andrews wants to be queen, we w- should let her. Yeah, she can be queen. She is my queen. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, I, yeah hey. I'll, I'll kneel to that. They're they're delightful. I mean. I do, you know, there is the there is this classic Disney problem where they're like Anne Hathaway. She has frizzy hair now. What an uggo! Oh my god, yeah. she's so uggo. Can you imagine? Hair. And no one would ever speak to Anne Hathaway because she's just so hideous. <laughs> oh, unbelievable! It must be terrible to grow up with frizzy hair and know that you are like the symbol of evil and unattractiveness. I'm just, I'm always going to be the before. Yeah, right. I'm permanently a Disney Channel before picture. Yeah. Um, it's pretty brutal. Um, and then they're like, oh, her hair's straight. And everyone's like, what a goddess. <laughs> there, There's absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Look, there's a, a lot of like, sort of like dots not connecting. I think that my favorite thing about this movie. So yeah, one very low expectations. I, you know, I think as I saw last said last week, I was trying to see American Pie. Oh, and American I was, Pie. Not I was old like, enough. I knew this was something you, I remember the song you watched instead and of I, a rated R movie. And I was not old to. enough. And so like me and like all my, uh, my, my guy friends who are also 16, we saw this and I think we had a legitimately good time with very low expectations. <laughs> and that's, I think it's a delight. There's so many things in here that are better than they have to be. Yes. Uh, I think that's, that that's is why, a good summary of this movie. That's why I liked it. I mean, like there's a lot of, and there's a lot, I haven't seen it since then. I don't think, but I always, it always has a, a soft spot for me. There's a lot of like moments that, um, like I like the, um, the cable car crash, like like crash, like yeah, order of the rose thing, and them coming yeah. back in the final, like in the yeah, final yeah. back is great. That yeah. scene like, it makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> where the driver of a cable car is like, "You have to go to jail for this fender bender." Sorry, those are the rules. <laughs> like it's insane, but then then them coming back is a delight. It's better than yeah, it but at to least be. at least it's consistent. Like the world of this movie is that nothing really like makes sense in the traditional way. Yeah, it's basically. a cartoon. Yeah. Cause Cause it's the, a cartoon. The, the yeah. premise is already pretty ridiculous. So it wouldn't really make that much sense mm. if the world was like presented very straight or serious. Yeah I, yeah, I generally feel like a ridiculous premise on a realistic world is the way to go so yeah. that I can be like, I've suspend my disbelief from this because you clearly understand how driving works. But when it's like, well, there could be a princess, but also driving isn't normal. Like also you play keys with M&Ms on your on your keyboard like everything is so wackadoodle that it makes me focus on how like makes me remember constantly how dumb genovia is as a country okay right. I mean, talk about, sorry let, let's go on a side tangent about genovia first okay um, if you google if you look this up you bingle this if you pull up the uh fandom.com wiki, wiki for genovia it is possibly the most interesting thing I've ever read. Um, the Wikipedia, the wiki for this includes the fact that Genovia was invaded by the Nazis in 1941. You don't have well, to put that. I mean, I mean, it's plausible. Here's the thing. <laughs> If they didn't get invaded, they're either like neutral or like complicit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I, I, it does not say whether or not they were complicit because certainly that was a possibility at that time. Well, well where is Genovia? It's kind of my it's question. Monaco. It's just Monaco. So it's between, what is it, between France and Spain? I mean, wait, so, but why does, why do we have to have, wait, no, is that right? It looks like it's between France and Italy. France and Italy, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, so, guys, no, but, it's made up. It can be wherever it wants to be. Yeah. Well, no, but they say in the movie where <laughs> no. it is. They say that it's between what countries it's between. Um, Look at the text, Anthony, okay? Yeah. <laughs> But this is what, anyway, this thing is so amazing. Uh, this, this wiki is so, it's like, okay, it is, the temperature is 75 degrees year round. Uh, Beautiful. Like good, good that's pair a fun weather? fact. Um, they are, there's no taxes. There's no, you pay no income tax and it has the lowest business tax in the world. And yet it also has the best health care and incredibly high wages due to tourism. But 
cruise ships are not allowed because they were destroying the um, the architecture. So oh, they wow. managed to keep all the tourism economy without having any of the things they don't want. Um, How could a cruise ship destroy the architecture? Well, they do. You know, the, you, the cruise ships have destroyed Italy. They're like they just too many people at a time. They're I don't remember. Anyway, uh, um, oh, oh, it's like not literally the cruise ships hitting things, right? No, that's no, why no, I was no. picturing. No, I don't think so. Oh, like, this like, is hey, I have an interesting Genovia fact. Ninety three percent of the population is Roman Catholic. So it's kind of cool that we're having this fictional country and we can do whatever we want with it. You know? <laughs> kind of the freedom is unlimited. So that's kind of cool. If you could imagine like a very Christian, like European country, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of a fun, like kind of a twist, you know? It also <laughs> cool. has the lowest rate of infant mortality in the world and the lowest violence rates in the world. Oh, wow. wow. It sounds like a great place. It does, so doesn't it sound like a nice yeah. place. You're saying it's like good and Christian. It's very <laughs> Christian and, and, and very good. Kind of a, a, a sort of Christian sort of ethno state sort of situation. Cool. I mean, look, not Christian enough for the Nazis. All right. It, I'm, that's all they also we can take say. in a ton of, uh, of refugees um, every year. <laughs> good job, guys. Good job, Genovia. I wonder if I can like canonically shoehorn this to be like where like Julie Andrews uh, escaped to after the sound of music. You know, like can this oh, be like yeah. oh, I like that. Well that was Austria. Yeah. So it's well, we got a little bit of ground to cover. All okay. right. Yeah. I'm, they, they climbed every it's a short though, train so ride wherever you're going is the point. Yeah. Um, okay. From one fictional country to the other, I want to ask Ezra about two thousands era San Francisco. So below market, maybe not maybe it's still presently gentrifying. Um, oh, I mean, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a while. I th- feel like. Okay, so here's the thing. Memory is fuzzy. I know we got some dot com bust. I don't remember exactly what the years were. Uh, but like, it was not like a. It wasn't not like there's a lot of steps I think to go. Also, I did not go into the city a lot because you know it wasn't. You know, right? I I was 16. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, you, you couldn't drive yet, ex- except sometimes in your. Well, you drove your Mustang. your Mustang around, right? And yeah, you I was allowed to figure out how to drive uh, up the hill. By the way, Actually, that, that part made me very frustrated. Oh, yeah. Um, it makes no sense at all. Well, yeah. you know what made me frustrated? That we're supposed to think this boy is cute while he's clearly the worst mechanic on the planet. <laughs> yeah, that how come she didn't like so You get often. what you pay for, Anthony. He was yeah. free. Okay, so that is I, Jason, Jason uh, Schwartzman's brother. Jason Schwartzman's brother, yeah. yeah. Lead singer oh. of Rooney. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, Ezra, but here's what I didn't know. Was 2000s era <laughs> San Francisco currently overrun by scooters i thought that, that was, was definitely was a 2020s actually, thing very surprised to see a scooter there uh, so many scooters i was not so surprised to see it struggling with hills because that sounds about right <laughs> um mm-hmm. but um no I, I thought i know we had like a razor scooter thing going on like the, just like the the just you yeah, know this was a, but this was but a not, gasoline powered scooter I was really surprised to see that uh i'll be honest I definitely saw like one of those as a kid and I was like, that's the coolest person. But the idea that they were just like all over the place was a big surprise. Yeah, no, the, the, <laughs> I mean, there were two. Uh, well, so. Yeah. yeah. But, you know uh, what? Um, this movie, speaking of kind of past, but just this movie itself, I got very nostalgic and sad watching this. Just thinking about a time in which Disney would release like a $26 million dollar family comedy that would make 130 million dollars at the box office yeah like that is so that to me the fact that this movie came out got released it's the most alien fictional thing in the yeah, world yeah, of yeah. 2022 yeah. than anything in this actual movie yeah i like, mean it is this movie I guess, would never this would be a hulu original right it yeah, was gonna get made to today yeah. for this sure would, never get a theatrical release a film like this um yeah the, so the like the heyday of the the 20 million dollar family movie was like the mid 90s right so this was a, like on the tail end of that but definitely this is all like yeah this is straight to disney plus now for sure um what else was like oh um let's talk about okay let's talk about some of the people going things happening in this movie um so her friend is the meanest friend I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah, she kind of sucks. Her best huh? friend is like, "What? You aren't over your father's death? It's been six weeks." <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, yeah, pretty messed up. Brutal uh, friend. How could you? I mean, it's been a month. It's been over a month. Stop crying about it. What right. is wrong with you? That's her yeah. friend. Over yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That is. That was a little weird. I wonder if there's like. Yeah, that 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 was a little weird. Also, the um, uh, 
okay so i guess the, watching this again my issues were like i think alex like what you're saying is that like the the plotting was a little messy where it's usually you want to have like okay the the character is tempted you know during their after their makeover and they make bad decisions uh and like that's what you know makes their uh, relationships fall out uh and like there wasn't really like a clear cause i guess of her missing like uh, her friend's uh show it was just like oh yeah i just didn't ever i forgot to tell you that i couldn't make it like it was like <laughs> It's just just poor scheduling. I don't know. Like, yeah, it just, it, yeah. It was, poor it, scheduling was like a, a driving force. Yes. Of the, of the yes. plot. Yeah, she triple booked a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, you but she, and and it's funny that the person she told she couldn't make it until the next week, and the person she didn't tell she wasn't going to make it were equally angry with her. Yeah, that it like is no call, no show doesn't matter. Um, I do think the most interesting character, or one of the most interesting characters in this movie, is is the driver. Um, who says at the beginning, like, what am I? I'm not a babysitter. I'm the head of security. And then the next scene is like, well, I'm the best babysitter you've yeah, ever yeah. heard of. He's just so good mm. at it. The rest it. of yeah. the movie, he's and just he seems like to love it. Like he's, he's loving yeah, it. He found himself. Yeah. He's so good at it. <laughs> um, up to I think probably my favorite thing that he ever says is after there's like the Pavarazzi catch her kissing Surfer Boy, and the well, Queen is like uh, catching. Surfer boy like kissing her basically, yes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, no. She tried to kiss him earlier, but then got tangled in a crab net. Um, anyway, it's complicated. Um, but then he was kissing her on camera, and then the queen, who's been like chill about literally everything she's done, is like f- doesn't understand paparazzi. Is like, what? How dare you do something in public? Gets very angry with her, and then Joseph says to her, "My sources tell me he was just using her." Which suggests that Joseph has cultivated a high school gossip ring as a major source of national intelligence. Well, he probably just goes to the high school dressed as a kid and gets people to tell him stuff. Yeah, I mean, after he drops her off, he like parks his limo and then is like puts on a backpack and a hat and is like, (laughs) I go to this school. (laughs) What's everyone saying about that princess girl? What's the goss? Yeah, it it almost feels... so funny. It almost feels like maybe in the story... Uh, like, I don't know about the book, but maybe in the book, the the main character is kind of a self insert, maybe a little bit. Mm. Um, so she doesn't really have like the, a lot of the conflict doesn't really come from inside of her, which is like, I think, kind of a problem. I guess the one conflict is whether she's going to choose to be a princess or not. But beyond that, like it is, but her reasoning behind wrong. it, like her thought, pro- we don't I have no, no idea what is yeah. what does she like about it? What does she not like about it? Like her friend is like don't do this. We're fighting for vegetarianism. And then later is like, Oh, you can do that from the throne, but we don't actually know anything that Thermopolis likes in the world. We don't know her hobbies. We don't know what she would like to accomplish. She's just like, Oh, I don't want to be awkward, but now that I'm not awkward, it's annoying too. Was it about vegetarianism or was it about just teenagers having a voice in society? Cause that's kind of how they framed it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we need to listen to teens, you know? It's important that we I do have think we, we've got a lot more idiots. teens' voices out there. Like, I think it's like, uh, when they're uh-huh. saying, like, man, you know how 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 many, like, how hard it is to have a voice? It's like, well, actually, like, we got a lot of teens, like, with a pretty good reach now, 20 years <laughs> I, later. It's so true. I think culturally, we, we have, like, teens are out there. Their their voices are being heard. <laughs> you, you know? know? <laughs> teens? teens? Teens are out there. That's the thing about teens 2022. Have, like, millions of followers on TikTok, okay? Like, oh, they're yeah, doing Can you imagine? Right. I just found out I'm a princess. That's the beginning of that video with 200 million views. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I used to be invisible, and I used to have the ugliest hair. But now yeah. I found out I'm a princess. Follow me on my journey. Right. <laughs> Bam. Right there. That would be I'm an amazing series TikTok. on TikTok. Um, yeah. Also, just like this girl who lives in a firehouse, whose mom paints randomly, who drives us, yeah. who's into restoring 60s muscle cars. Like she would be a TikTok machine. Yeah, mm. <laughs> she would be so good at TikTok even before the princess stuff comes up. I was well, so annoyed. At- she hates oh, public speaking. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but yeah. selfie camera is different. It's yeah. not public speaking. No one can see it's you. Still, to her, it's still all the same. I Just mean, well, actually, every time I will say, because she like throws up in her high school speech class, and there is a storyteller on TikTok um, named Elise who's really great and funny and has like 7 million followers or something like that, and who told a story about throwing up in her high school speech class. So I kind of wanted to tell this princess, even if she doesn't become a princess, she's going to, she'll get better. It's going to turn yeah. out okay. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. As long as you're rich, everything works out. 
Yeah. She's, yeah. she's so rich, it's really annoying. Um, the school is I annoying mean, how rich everybody... All yeah. these high school kids read the newspaper. Like, it's just such an obnoxious school. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, all right. That's fair. Look, there, <laughs> all of that's fair, but the movie's fun. That's what yeah, we're skipping yeah. over, is that the movie is fun, and it's charming, and uh, Julie Andrews is... So, I, I really liked all the My Fair Lady references, because there's basically scenes where it's basically My Fair Lady, except Julie Andrews is uh, Rex Harrison this time. Oh, you know? yeah. Like, there's even... There's a visual reference that I feel like is exactly at where, with the hand on the um, staircase going down, and it's like oh, a close-up yeah. on the hand. It's like definitely right out of right. my fair lady yeah. Right. And that's like, yeah yeah because my fair lady was pretty woman and this is pretty woman again you know it's another <laughs> right. more it's yeah. just more gary marshall doing gary marshall stuff so yeah, yeah. it makes total sense yeah, yeah. it does yeah, yeah i really like that is scene a lot it has so uh, yeah some more compliments about it it also has some really solid cat acting <laughs> so there's fat a cat there's a fat lo- a, a cat version who well, there's one cat that moved and one cat that didn't move basically is what they're saying in wait, the yeah in- wait are you joking because that cat acting was actually horrible I was gonna call <laughs> out that that was like one of the worst okay cats you're right I've not cat acting screen. but the cat had a care the cat was crucial to the plot and I like it that was, yeah. <laughs> I like it cat was, plotting they first of all they never had the cat in a shot that wasn't just a special close up on just the cat right. because obviously uh, of the that cat, cat was staring at whatever the treat was <laughs> just next to the camera <laughs> and, and it also the way it was staring was as if it was scared because they've been yelling at this cat all day because he sucked at his job he was the worst cat I've ever seen on screen there's a shot of him inside a little cat house it's like a little dog house thing uh-huh. and it cuts to it and he immediately just walks right out of it and it's like well that's the best they got the best they got of him being cute in his little house was him immediately walking out of it. Wow. Yeah, that cat, no. No go on that cat. I, look, a cat, I like all I like cats. I think they're all weird little guys. Oh, I lo- and I every I'm, cat is an angel. Every cat um, is an angel. But that I, one was so not I would good. I never at being suggest on they were not doing a great job in the movie. I think it's more like the setting was not right for Fat Louie. It's <laughs> not Fat Louie's fault. That's it was fair. like they put all these lights and sounds around him and he just wanted to nap in a little pool of light. So right. Oh, I'm not mad cats. at Fat Louie. Guys, there are four cats. So um there's like there's a jumping cat, a carryable cat, a sitting cat, and like a walking cat. <laughs> well, that's cat. interesting. Because the IMDB listed Fat Louie as an actor and was himself. No, it's either Fats Louie or Fat Louise. Oh, okay. Fats yeah. Louie, okay. the multiple Fats <laughs> Louie. <laughs> Calls the sack. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to kind of circle back around uh, talking about good performances. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Just I was trying to do that. This was in my compliment section. Then Hunter yeah. took it uh, over to shit on this perfect angel. Just <laughs> how, how good Anne Hathaway is in yes. this movie. And I think yeah. Anne Hathaway kind of gets a bad rap. Does um, she? I, I think oh, she I thought, does. I thought but, everybody liked Anne Hathaway. No, I think a lot of everyone, people... Uh, if people like every, if everyone likes it, some people also don't like it, right? You need a hot well, take yeah, at some point, right? So, yeah, yeah, right. Go ahead. But but Anne Hathaway has kind of um you know, so so reputation um a reputation and sort of is, but I think in this movie she is so good, and like my two favorite moments in this movie were both improved by Anne Hathaway on the set. So there's there's one scene when she's on bleachers and she trips and falls and gets up and continues the scene while yeah. laughing. Oh, that, yeah, was that was an good. Anne Hathaway thing, and then there's a second. Hey, okay, wait, okay, okay, wait. I do uh, just to, yeah. in terms of like improvisation. Somebody falling on a wet thing doesn't really count as like I she mean, improv. It was in the character scene. though. It's a charming <laughs> yeah. moment, no, Alex. Sure. Yeah. Come I, on. No, I know, but I was like, it, 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 it's just when when it's like a IMDb fun fact. People love to be like that thing where someone clearly ate shit. They didn't Look, plan that. What she yes is yeah. and did gravity. <laughs> all right, what do you want? She did. Yeah. Keep, she did stay in character when she fell, which is excellent. And then there's another scene uh, when she sets a guy's arm on fire yeah. in a thing, yeah. and he puts his arm in an ice bucket. And originally, the fire was supposed to go out the second he put his arm in the ice bucket, but it didn't. And she grabbed a cup of water and threw it on him, and like, uh. and it looks planned out, but like yeah, that also was again just something she just yeah. did on the fly. And like that is like, especially working with like legends like this, your first big performance, this movie literally was on her shoulders. Like if she was yeah. bad yeah. in this movie, yeah. this movie would absolutely And she's work. like, she is, uh, she's not an uggo, but she is gangly still in this movie, even though she's, she's like oh, 20 fair. in this movie, but she is like gangly she, and a little weird in, in a good way for this role. 
I'll say this. It was probably very intimidating for her to have dialogue scenes with Julie Andrews. And the yeah. fact that she does do you, not do you think? come off as... Yeah, I'm I sure. I would feel like on paper that would be intimidating. And then you'd get there and then she would just Mary Poppins you and you'd be like, oh, I'm so comfortable and at home. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If we want, we can kind of shift the credit to Julie Andrews probably kind of mentoring I feel like uh, Julie, if jo Julie Andrews could talk me through anything and I would yeah. be at ease the whole time. Yeah, not to take I it. I kind of like right. your point. You're right. It's better. an intense job for a 20-year-old. Yeah, no, it must have been scary going into it. And then, of course, she worked her magic and everything yeah. was fine. But like <laughs> it, it, but also like if she didn't, if she wasn't coachable at all, if she wasn't, if they weren't able to get her to that point, those dialogue scenes would have been really awkward because Julie is over there with like a lifetime of experience yeah. crushing like even the worst lines yes. that this like whatever person wrote for her. Right. Uh, it like, yeah, it would have looked weird. It would have been easy for it to look weird. And it's it totally true. And I, I, I do think Anne Hathaway is, is good fun in this movie. And this is not a criticism of the movie because this is how all movies work. But I would love one time for a movie about a person who is an uggo and goes through a glow up instead of them starting with a hot person and just putting a wig on them. Yeah. You have the full weight of Hollywood act makeup and coaching and like hire an ugly person. There's plenty of us out here willing to work. <laughs> like put me in the first half of the movie and then make me hot. That's your thing. You're so good at. Right. Right. Why would you, you're it's such a cop out to be like, well, we'll just fool them by giving her frizzy hair. Like, oh, put an ugly person in and then actually do the glow up. People can do that. You're this capable makes of it. So much sense that you didn't necessarily love this movie because you're watching it and you're jealous because you felt like you should have gotten this opportunity. Right. I should have been, I should have been cast as the princess in Princess yeah, Diaries. That's I'm what yeah. I was overlooked. That you, you, you break <laughs> combs all the time trying, trying to pin them through your hair. Well, it's, people it, it's constantly funny I'm like, see your you face can... for the first time and just scream. As uh, people I mean, on you YouTube really know, relate. I have curly hair for the first time now, so I'm not going to say like I've been. A, I'm a person who's been like fighting for curly hair rights all of this time. But I did like I've had a curly. I've had curly hair for two weeks, and I was like, "How dare they say she's ugly because she has <laughs> this curly hair?" Um, very I, converted. I think the thing that that like looking back at this now, I think the thing that's really interesting, right? So like we've had like you know couple decades of you know Anne Hathaway being famous and this is like kind of interesting like introduction to that right where it's like this is uh, yeah. a story of someone who's sort of like you know like you are special now you've been plucked out of like you know being normal and now you are going oh, to be famous yeah. your life's going to change um and to have that kind of like you know also at the time when I was seeing you're it, saying right? like, Anne Hathaway got princess diary yeah, in absolutely. real life with yeah, right? this movie Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, and that's so I think that's such a good point. And I think that's also really you know, seeing this, you know, when I was like 16, it's like this is about like, you know, the excitement of your life beginning, basically, right? And like all the things that are gonna happen going forward, right? That that feeling mm -hmm. when it's like, hey, this is your country, check out the window, right? At the end, like that's a yeah. cool moment. And to sort of see like like I, I like that it stops here and you don't like it to see like maybe like the 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 maybe the bummer side of some of these. Uh but but I think it's really interesting of that, that that kind of uh that you know that that's why I think that like for all those movie shortcomings, the magic of it, I think, is that like, like, hey, like, there's something special about you. Now everyone's gonna get to see it. Um, and and I do, and yeah. I do sort of feel like I am a little maybe maybe this is like jaded from all the years of Disney movies, but there's so many kids movies, so many like young adult coming of age stories that are like, great news. This is not your real family. <laughs> like every kid, the whole t you're just like, please, I want something better mm. than what I actually have. And I'm a little, I do feel like a little bit annoyed with it at a certain point. That's yeah. like, not that's every fair. kid is secretly a wizard or a princess or whatever. Right. Like a lot of the time, and it, and it's especially annoying when it's like this, where it's like she's already living in a castle. She has the most charmed life that any six, any fifteen and a half year old has ever had going to that school that has an ice cream machine in the lobby, living in a firehouse in a tower. She has up to four cats named Fat Louie. She has, like, her mom throws darts at paint and gets a living out of it. Her next-door neighbor is a hilarious, bummer oh, TV yeah, writer. Oh, about that? Every, yeah. she, gets to ride a, she gets to ride a scooter <laughs> before scooters are cool. Yeah, every, her life is a every goddamn... Day and people sit on her all the time. It's great. Right. That's possibly right. to be complaining Some people about. occasionally really like sit that, on Anthony. her, but... Yeah, just... some people love that. Yeah, that's true. That is true. But, like, she's like, oh, I'm a little ugly, but everything in her life is so goddamn charmed right. that it's a little frustrating to be like... Her Dad, Even this, she's you're like, bummed about it. Oh, I wish this was a palace. How much cooler of a movie would it be 
if you had a movie where it was like the special secret kid, like our, I mean, we'll just use this example. So it's like, you're a princess. We, we, we know now that you're a princess. And then like, she's all like excited about it. And then they like, you know, that maybe like an hour into the movie, they're like, Oh wait, whoops. Actually, we got the wrong kid. You're not Claire, a princess. Claire. At all. Yeah. So sorry. It was actually Mandy Moore's character is the princess. <laughs> wait, she's a princess. You're not a princess at all. You're not even sort of special. You're just somebody, whatever. <laughs> and then the rest of the movie up. is just about her dealing with that. Like, yeah. I mean, you could, it turns out solve 99% of your social problems by going to one hairdresser. Yeah. But with a curling <laughs> iron, but like still, you're not actually special. Yeah, just like that idea of dealing with your fake specialness uh, and then realizing that you're just a normal person. Like, we do you're have... a wizard, Harry. Oh, shit. No, you aren't. Um... Yeah, oh, so... <laughs> that's, a, that's it. You're a wizard, Dudley. Oh, wait. Never mind. <laughs> oh, never mind. Shit. No, you're not just a wizard. Follow Dudley. <laughs> wait, you're sorry. Is this like a guy? Is this 1402? Oh, sorry. The letter was for 1401. We're so sorry, Princess. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> And then just the rest of her year, she's watching limos show up at her neighbor's <laughs> house and take them to princess training. I, I want Mr. that story. Is the, neighbor, the, the, the princess. <laughs> Surely this has been done. Like it's, it's just the story of your. It's the special call to adventure. Wait, no, it isn't. Like, oh, that's, that's so good. I'm sure someone's done it, but man, maybe, maybe this is our our next podcast book. Is yeah. um, Harry Potter's neighbor, <laughs> <laughs> the Princess Diaries next door neighbor. <laughs> Just like all of this, watching all this shit going on and just seething. Oh, I oh love God. that. It's just so funny and cruel. It, 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 it's it, it, it's it so and real. You know? right, we do need to move on. So last thoughts. I want to share one more thing that made me the maddest of anything in this whole movie. <laughs> oh, was Graham. it the lack go. of diaries in the oh, movie? Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Why is it called the writes, Princess Diaries? I guess there's the one. The yeah. one diary really... at the very end. There's not a lot of diaries in this movie called Diaries. Bridget Jones's Diaries? Has a lot of diaries. A lot of diary. That's a good Princess point. Jones does do a lot. Yeah, that's so true. Um, but I will. The one thing that drove me crazy is that in the like in the like climax when she has to run out of her firehouse, she's in a huge hurry. She runs down the stairs. There are two fireman poles in this oh. house. She's used them when she's not in a hurry every time. And she was wearing skirts all the other time. This time she's wearing pants. The only time she was in a pro, she was like in a comfort, uh, not appropriate, but like it's not going to rub your thighs. She's mm -hmm. finally, and she's in a goddamn hurry. And she had the fast exit. And it was like, this time, you know what? Let's take the stairs. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I was so angry. The one time you built this up in this show, That's in this movie, true. like she's got this for emergencies and she does not use it. Well, I mean, to be fair, I have never seen anyone take a fireman's pole less gracefully than <laughs> Anne Hathaway in this movie. The way hey, but she did it. down that hey, fireman's but... pole. It was like that a, one was... shot where she did actually do it because it's like yeah. she comes down into it and then goes into a dialogue scene. Yeah, so I don't know if you know this, yeah. Anthony, that she was that was completely improvised. She was supposed to go down <laughs> smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just proud that she did it. Okay, yeah. like they didn't, they didn't fake Apparently, it. She did actually do it. Everyone on set did use that fireman's pole at some point. Basically, everyone loved it. Yeah, how could you yeah. not? Yeah, they are. They do seem fun. Although I believe that they stopped using them in firehouses because they were causing a lot of broken legs. Could they right, do slides they're... instead? Just like, just like a fun twisty slide. Ooh. I did. There is a great 99% <laughs> invisible on why fireman's poles exist, and it's super interesting actually because it was like originally when they were they were like companies that were competing against each other. And whoever company showed up to the fire first would get paid to put out that fire. Oh my God. So speed was super, super important. And I think it was a San Francisco fire company um, that was the first ones to like, because they were all tall because San Francisco, right? And so the mm -hmm. first floor was all the wagons and the horses. And then the, so the people would sleep on the second floor. And then they were like, uh, we're in a big hurry. And so they went down the pole. It was also something like. Oh, the horse. Oh, this is what it was. The horses wanted to go up the stairs because they smelled the hay. So they had to make really tight staircases so horses uh... couldn't get up. And so then it took too long to get down. So this was the first time they were like, if there's a pole, you go really fast. And horses aren't going to go off the pole. So and the horses can't do the pole. Yeah, Not yet. Yeah. Not, Not yet. yet. Give them you time. Keep your, you got to keep your horse off the pole. That's your Don't goal. Count horses out. Don't anyway, count out. Um, anyway, good fireman pole. Last thoughts on Princess Diaries before we get into our um, our argumentative section, our rules debate. Um, I liked it. It was statue. fun. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah, you. And the, statue likes, the statue likes the statue likes like the string cheese, Alex. Oh yeah, oh, that, that was a good line. I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was all right. Anthony, last thoughts? Yeah, solid, solid, fun family movie. Good all right, sit. all right. We got a lot of talking to do left, so stick around for that. 
And we're going to talk about Sean. All right, really quick. So segment three, the master list. First of all, where are we going to rank The Princess Diaries in the list of quality of the best movies of all time of season five? Um, so we have, this is our 16th movie. Currently, the best movie we've the, of all time of season five is The Third Man. And the worst one is The Transformers, the movie. Um, the quality line, I believe we have between eight and nine is between In the Cut and Life Aquatic. Is that right? Uh, that was mm-hmm. cable guy. Yeah. Or is, a, is it's it, we, we're saying life aquatic is above the line for some people and not for others. Mm-hmm. Life aquatic no, then between uh, nine and ten is the cutoff between okay and not okay. We have different quality lines, okay? Because yeah. I you have to remember I like that hard to be a god that we watched. Yeah, yeah. which was so, terrible. Oh, um, was and the awful. cable guy was actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's some quality, but anyway, around eight to ten is where the quality sure. line is for most people. I I would say this is the same quality as the cable guy. Oh, interesting. Ooh. That's my, my, it's a very different movie, but yeah, to me, yeah, yeah. I probably got the same amount of chuckles and delights and the same, of, oh, huh, hmm. I like so, this hmm. better than The Cable Guy, like, hands down, for sure. Interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. so Cable Guy is currently 10th, just so you know, and above it is Life Aquatic, below it is Hard to Be a God. So, Anthony, I think that, because so, we can't do ties, we can't put yeah. it exactly the same I place as The Cable this, Guy. Between Life Aquatic and Cable Guy. You put this nine, or yeah, 10 above Cable Guy. Hunter, that sounds similar to what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying right above Cable Guy is where I would put it, which sucks because I, I mean, I just don't agree where Cable Guy is because for me, Cable Guy is much lower. Um, right. And you're wrong. But, it's really good. And, and it's hard, annoying hard to that be Battleship a God would be, is so, so high. Put, I don't want to put it up below Hard to Be a God because I don't want it to be below Cable Guy, but I like Hard to Be a God better than Princess Diaries. Well, you know, you know how the math works. Right. I'm yeah, saying yeah, you're Cable saying guy. 10. Ezra, where do you put it? Four. <laughs> hell yeah it's hell not hell better yeah. than apollo 13 you <laughs> absolutely look here's oh, the thing. it comes on tv it comes on tnt i'm watching through this all the way through i'm not i'm changing the channel apollo 13 yeah, there's I no never way you wouldn't apollo finish apollo 13, 13. it's so oh, compelling it was filmed I, in outer space yeah. inner space but it was filmed in space ezra this was you heard me filmed in San Francisco. Four. hey this was technically filmed in space as well <laughs> all right all Planet movies Earth. are Spaceship filmed Earth. in Man, space that's true Except for a Marvel movies, RNS. Where do you actually put it? No, I'm not actually kidding. That I'm, I am sticking. It's, four. it's number four. Do you I've already it? said mine. <laughs> I, I, I give you both permission to adjust. I mean, it's but, me now. It's up to me to where I would act to, to adjust. But we're trying to not actually. I think I'm it's not cheating. This, um, so. I'm not. Um. Oh, I mean, does in this terms mean it's of enjoyment, be above in the cut, because I will be upset. I don't in the know, cut, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of numbers. Uh, there are a lot of numbers. There's a lot of numbers. There, huh? Who can say? I mean, it's <laughs> tough because I did I I enjoyed this more than Battleship Potemkin and more than In the Cut, but less than Life Aquatic, less than Cable Guy, but definitely more than Hard to Be a God, but less than PJ. Um, <laughs> wow, you're all over the place. No. No, you guys put the movies in the wrong order. This is mm. not on, I'm not all over the place. <laughs> this list is crazy. It is pretty crazy. Um, I, I, I think do it love makes it. total sense. I mean, yeah. the only big problem is Apollo 13 is way too high. But <laughs> way yeah, too high. But besides but that, high. Well, I will say, so I do think that, I mean, this is going to really screw up this list because Ezra's being a nut. But <laughs> I, I do think, I think this is a similar movie to Cable Guy with some similar problems, but is less good. And I like I so I think Anthony are like coming and I are coming from a pretty similar place. Hunter is also in a pretty similar place. So I think the correct it's clearly better than hard to be a god. So I think the correct answer is 11, um, which is a real problem because of nuts, because that is going to. So, again, I'm not gaming at all. Um, So that because we had three people in the same place and one person out, out in outlierville that puts this at nine with 8.75 total um Woo. which is nine below in the cut above life aquatic which hell yeah is that's, fine i can live with that yeah. we can Thank all live. i mean that's the point of averages is we can all kind we're all a little bit annoyed but no it, but we can all live with it that's fine um <laughs> i'm gonna like i loved in the cut so much i like am probably gonna rewatch it soon that's how much i liked that movie like um i'm not just all remember right. However much you dislike the list, my favorite movie that we've watched so far is not even close to the top, to the tippy top. Not even well, that's close. True. You, yes, we have two outliers and then two people trying to hold the show down. Okay, um, Ezra, <laughs> so this was your second movie pick yes. of the year um, after Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, which means you have just earned yourself five points. 
what are you going to do with those five points? Okay, so first the the leaderboard, right? Uh, so yeah, you can give us the current score. Yes, in last place, Anthony three points. Uh, in second to last, Hunter five points, and tied for first, Ezra and Alex six points. That's correct. Uh, now first, you have five. You can distribute them. No halvesies, and no one can refuse their points. Right. So first, Alex. You know, this this is the fair one, right? So two mm-hmm. for you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Oh, backroom dealings. Hunter, one for you. You know why it's four. All right. What? Uh, yep. A- what? Anthony. <clears throat> Anthony, one for you. What? <laughs> because why not? Uh, and one for me. So, uh, new score. Uh, yeah, what does that do for... Our, okay, I'm really skeptical of this Hunter thing. Is I'm, I'm Alex kind of in the lead now? Yes, Alex is in the lead with a new target on his back. Alex, eight points. Ezra, mm-hmm. seven points. Uh, Hunter, six points. Anthony, four points. All right. Well, yeah. uh, that is a fascinating thing. Order of business number two. Ezra, what is your next target movie? I I thought about a lot of different stuff on this one. Um, mm-hmm. Fundamentally, when I thought of this, I laughed uh, at picking this one. Uh, and so I think that was the right call. Um, I was thinking, Great. so Alex, I know you're a big fan of the MCU. And I was trying to think, oh what would damn be it. your <laughs> yes. best yes. movie to watch? And I think that would have to be, um, the, the what's the best entry point to, to, to the MCU? Obviously, obviously, it's Avengers Endgame. So we're no, oh my God, yes. <laughs> yes. No, I don't want to watch another of fucking Avengers movie. <laughs> No, no. Here, this is great because, like I've said over and over, we could get to buy movie quite quickly from yes. the MCU. I yeah. know, and I think that's probably why you just there's some point involved in that already. Yeah. Um, wow. I, I think this I did rules. have to watch Endgame. Endgame's uh, good. It's Endgame's so good. It's no Infinity War. Oh my it's god! It's just the. It's just like I liked Endgame better than Infinity War because Infinity War literally felt like watching a child play with toys. But it was at just, least Endgame had like somewhat an emotional arc to it. I I was I think Avengers is the most boring movie I've ever sat through. Like the le- the least the first, things that which, are interesting at which any Avengers? moment. There's a yeah, lot which of Avengers. I know I watched two of them. I don't remember which two, but both of them was just like just like the just a slog, just the worst slog. Um, and then now you got to do it again. No, You're, no, no but, maybe I don't because maybe I'm going to try to not let that happen. Um, I mean, well, who's right. picking next? Hunter is picking this this week. Um, so first, that okay, so we got Ezra taking here. Avengers Endgame 2019 um, is Ezra's next pick. Um, even though, and he's you know because he gives away points like a weirdo. Um, he's only in second place despite having Ezra's, finished two movies. Ezra's the first chaotic one neutral, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let Ezra play chaotic neutral. All right, so that means Speaking the next order of business, Hunter, it is your turn points. to pick what we're doing next week. So, Hunter, uh, yes, Anthony. Hey, you want to do a split? Uh, I, I'd be down to do some splitting. So here, so here's here's what I uh, propose. If we do, uh, you get three points, I get two points. Split, we'll be tied at. Uh, uh, which feels good. It just feels good to be tied. Feels with good. So we both be you tied. You won't be tied, at... but that. Well, no, you would not be tied. Wait, tied anymore. No, um, that would put Anthony at seven and you at eight. It's currently Look, eight, you know, seven, six, four. You know what would help me feel better about being in last place? Getting to watch the taking a felon one. Two. Yeah, <laughs> and, a movie and, I've and always wanted to see. A here's movie the thing I'm very too. much looking forward to seeing. You actually have a like. Well, okay, wait. So I'm proposing that Anthony get three points and I get two points, and that right. would not Which make would us bring talk? him to seven and you to eight. Oh, yeah, okay, because he's currently two points right. behind you. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Well, well, I, I, I don't want to. I'm I, currently I, one, two, three points behind you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying. Actually... Last place, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually um, did not know anything about this movie. Taking taking a fellow one two three, and then I was um, talking to somebody on the New York the New York subway, mm. and they mm. just brought this movie up because okay. I guess this movie has to do with the. It's about with, hijacking a subway. Yeah, um, so this movie just came up naturally like two days ago, and I was like, "Wow, I'm literally about to choose that movie for the for the game." So of course, uh, Anthony, I will of course choose taking a fellow one two three, um, which we will travel awesome. to via. Uh, Hector. Yeah, uh-huh. Hector Elizondo. Hector Elizondo. Yes, that means we're at a hat trick for three weeks in a row of points. Yeah, because Ezra it. cleverly picked um, a movie between two of our movies as his target movie. 
Yeah. Why um, do you have to do that? Why can't you just say, "Hey, it's cool. We got a hat trick." This was okay. because this was a, a bad movie, but a brilliant gameplay pick. Yeah. Yeah. This, clearly, Princess not a bad movie. This is the ninth best movie we've ever seen, Alex. So <laughs> that's it's a not, good point. Not a bad movie. Uh, all oh. right. So the taking of Pelham one two three from 1974 is your official pick, Hunter, for next week. Yes. Um, for what, what it's if worth, my next pick is taking a film um, the Tony Scott remake? Oh yeah, <laughs> if I just just more just taking the Pelhams. Yeah, if I just at some point we already have a Pelham. We don't need it anymore. Yeah. Um, Hector Elizondo is in both of these. You're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fun. Um, I did not realize Ezra. I just want to say again. I know Anthony thought it took some of the magic away. I think it's important to recognize what a brilliant pick this okay. Princess Diaries was. Yeah, yeah, no, it was I, great. I have no problem saying taking the magic. It's the way you said it. It was the <laughs> oh well, no, I just Ezra over here. No, no, I think it. Was, I I didn't. Re- I'm just like in awe of Ezra's gameplay here, and I oh. wish I hadn't had to watch this movie, but I'm very impressed. <laughs> Um, all right, that is the pick. That is the next move. Um, nicely done, you guys. Last order of business um, is a meat buddy that we got to thank. So this week, all right, so as you guys know, um, we had two months of guilt, guilt-free guilt meat buddiness. If you became a meat buddy in March or April, you got guilt-free. You got your guilt amnesty for not having done it earlier. And then we announced that in May, if you became a meat buddy, double guilt May, right? We're currently yeah. in double guilt May. Yeah, yeah. We haven't talked. I think we've talked a little bit about what June will be, but we haven't settled on it. So we received this message on Patreon this week from Sean. As we are now in double guilt May, I think it is the right time to inform you that I never got my recognition on the podcast when I switched to the Patreon. Given that we are in Double Guilt May, it means that you owe me two shout outs. Wow. So Double Guilt May has officially been Uno reversed right back to us. We have Double Guilt for failing to recognize Sean from June of 2020. Wow. When he came over to Patreon. And so first of all, Sean, thank you for becoming my video. Thank you for sticking around so long. I believe you initially signed up at first but, in 2017. Well, I just I just want to say real fast, Alex. I appreciate all the work you do on the show. I really do. I, I love you. I'm really happy that you do a lot of the back end work. You uh-huh. Make sure things are going here. Uh-huh. But I just really want to make it clear. We did not forget anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Ezra, and Hunter <laughs> did not. There's not a division of labor here, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I, again, Alex, I really appreciate all the work you do. I'm yeah. glad you're doing this. But, uh-huh. but, but I did not forget about Sean. I, I didn't know Sean yeah. fucking existed <laughs> because it's not what I do here. Well, right? I don't know if that's the quite the brag that you think that you didn't know about this guy's been donating the show since well, 2017. Look, our, our lives well, were I, worse because of it. Obviously, we didn't know about Sean. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm saying I, like, I'm upset. I'm upset at you for Sean. I you feel kept like you Sean away from us. us. Okay. You something. separated Sean from us and we wanted yeah. here's contact my, okay, with Okay, here's my question. Is this you guys doing double guilt to me or is this your just single guilt and we have mm. to do it again next week? We're all... T- uh, oh. I mean, I'm talking twice as loud as I would be otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Well, yeah. So, so I have agreed that I think Sean Sean's premise is correct and that we are going to give Sean two Meet Buddy segments, one today and one next week. Um, okay first up sean has asked for a pep talk sean is going to his first international conference next month Mm, so first international conference (laughs) presumably in the ragtag upstart country of genovia that could fall apart at any moment you got to be careful when you're in genovia because if you dance wrong the country might belong to the nazis yeah it's just on the verge at any moment um I, this is exciting, and I I would love to give some some more enthusiastic pep talks for Sean. I wish I had a lot of great advice for you. I am going to be going on my first international comedy trip in a couple months, and what? I don't know what it's like to go do business abroad. Really, I've done I guess not my first international, my first um, intercontinental. Anyway, I've been to Canada. Who cares? Um, anytime somebody says something's international, and they're like, "We brought someone from Vancouver," I feel like a little yeah, let no. down. So no, I don't no, want to no. say that because I went right, to Toronto. Look, I've been traveling Sean. international for comedy. But I'm going to be going to my first non-English speaking country Where? to do comedy in Amsterdam. 
in uh, I'm gonna Whoa. be spending Amsterdam 10 days is not a country, bro. I know, I know, but you said where, and you didn't say which country. Yeah, and it yeah. Leave anyway, alone. Holland He's going Holland to is also not a country. Holland's a region in the Netherlands. The point is. I'm going to be going to the Netherlands, which is very exciting because my mom was born there and I have not gotten wow. to go yet. And I got into a festival in Amsterdam and I'm going to go do a big show and it's going to be very exciting. And I am a little bit nervous about it. Uh, can, you wow. English there, but. can you give us a tight five on Stroop waffles? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think that's interesting. I wonder how they feel about Stroop waffles being a Starbucks everywhere kind of thing now that, that that's it. taken off. I do have some I have some thoughts on Dutch food. I have Dutch culture. I have a lot of experience with that, but only the like Americanized version. Uh, they're, they're responsible for carrots. How do you feel about that? Did I knew that? Responsible for? Oh them? yeah, did so we talk about mean? this recently? On I don't know. I don't podcast? know. This is like a thing I'm always interested in. But yeah, no, like I think like there's a bunch of carrot colors in the world, right? The or reason the we Holland have like chose orange because of the House like, of Orange. Man, from I the love monarchy. orange, right? Yeah. Yes. So they're, uh, they're the reason yeah. why carrots are orange. I did I did learn yeah. that recently. That is a great fact. Well, can we talk about Sean? Yeah, yeah we we're, we're talking, about talking about yeah. Sean by way of I, I can't believe of you. carrots. You turned no, it in. Look. You made it about you, Alex. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we were Don't gonna pep talk Sean, and then you had to make it about you. Here's some more yeah. guilt for you, this Alex. Is how this yeah. works? Everybody knows no refunds. All right. Look, anyway, Sean, but, so, here, so who's my, gone? Have advice. you guys traveled okay. for business internationally before? No, yeah, I haven't. Right. But I've watched worked a lot in of Korea movies. for a while. Okay. Does that count? That's true. All right. Yeah. So we'll start. Anthony, you have the least experience. You start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. Know where the American consulate is. <laughs> Learn that. That's very important. Mm -hmm. American embassy, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Is this know advice that or is. pep talking? I'm not really sure what... We always kind of conflate the two. Yeah, second thing, carry $10,000 in multiple denominations and oh. different countries going on you yeah, yeah, at all times. Not in your pockets. Yeah. And secondly, have a good time. You know, enjoy wow. yourself while just you're have there. Fun. Yeah, yeah, just, just have know fun. where to go when you get robbed and have a lot of money hidden somewhere on your body and have a good time, man. Just have a good yeah, time. Yeah. Hunter, you st so you st you worked in in Korea. Yeah. Uh, in Suwon, South Korea. I yeah. uh, I worked for for a time as an English teacher. I taught children English. Yeah. So, um what do you recommend for people going for their first international conference? Just be chill. Uh, everybody's chill everywhere. Um, if you're lost, uh, then just look lost. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't know where you're at, just, just like, just, just like walk around and Everyone throw your hands crying. up in the air. And somebody's going to get you. But Sean, I mean, Wait, are they going to get you or are they going to help you find out where no, to go? They're, they're going to take care of you, Sean. You oh, seem okay. sweet. You seem nice. You give yep. money to us. You are probably the kindest person I've ever met. Right. Probably. Yep. Yeah. So I really that means hope... if you are in a train station or a bus station or in, on the street being like, Wah! and that's what you do. You, just, you, you get, <laughs> Check out the YouTube, Sean. This is what you do. You go like, ah! and then somebody will immediately take you by the hand and uh, guide you to where you need to go. Even if they can't speak English, they'll just yeah. figure it out for that's you. So, yeah, that's, that's solid. What Ezra, what do you think? Uh, okay, so yeah, so I, I, uh, yeah, I, I like like Hunter. I taught English uh, uh, in Asia, um, and I also um, at one point uh, shot a TV ad in Iceland. Um, oh, wow. yeah, and so you know, you basically just you know, wait for your PA to come pick you up. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the key um, is the fixer; they'll do they'll yeah. really help you out. <laughs> uh, make friends. Uh, no, I mean like I uh, okay. Always good advice no matter where you're going. Bring layers. You know, yeah, never hurts. Um, Classic and, uh, Iceland advice, but it does work a lot of places. Yeah, uh, I looked at um, the IBS uh, Tours dot com, which is international business seminars, not uh, you know uh, the irritable bowel syndrome, which is great. Right. Uh, so basically, I would not your... want to go on a bowel syndrome tour. Uh, that sounds like Magic School Bus, right? Yeah, I was um, gonna say, I mean, the Magic School Bus episode. That, that would be all right, but actually, an IBS tour sounds like we're going to see the world, but never be more than ten feet from a bathroom. That's great, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid, yeah. Um, yeah uh, okay, so yeah, check your passport. Do you have a passport? That's the first question. You better have. Yeah, a if passport. not, you need to get one. That's true. Uh, you probably have okay. to have your va your vaccination yeah, records. That's right. Update vaccinations. Great. Uh, okay, cash and credit card. Okay, so ch check your um, check uh your foreign uh I guess exchange fees on your credit cards. Uh, is a good thing. Maybe let your credit card uh, company know that you're going abroad uh, so that uh, you, know, you can still use it when you're there. So, okay, I, this is classic advice is like, tell your bank that you're going abroad. And I will say the first time I went to Canada, I'd like called my bank. It's like, hey, can you put a note that I'm going to Canada for these dates? 
Mm-hmm. And then I went to Canada, and then I came well, back. Well, they're like humble brag. Okay, though. Jeez. <laughs> like, not bad, Mr. Falcone. Good for ten, you, sir. Ten oh. years later, I was in a bank branch, and they were like, hey, are you still in Toronto? And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, we wrote down a note that you're in Canada, but they didn't put an end date. It was just like, he's in Canada for 10 years, and yeah. they never stopped a single one of my bank transactions in America. So you you oh, can call cool. your bank. My guess is they do not nice give a talk shit. to people. Yo. You'd be like, hey, I'm going abroad. What should I do there, bank? Chase, you're <laughs> everywhere. What, 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 what should we be doing when I'm in I Scotland? Do, I, and the other thing about the credit card fees is so interesting because it's like you, you get these like tiny fees, like 30 cents or whatever for the transaction fees every time you use your card. But mm-hmm. then if you take cash out you get a bad exchange rate and then you have to carry cash and then you end up with cash you don't need and i just don't know which one ends up being better in the long run yeah i hmm. I, yeah. I, I i'll say this uh i uh i have gotten in trouble with my bank being inside the united states and i told them where i was going so, like <laughs> i've had my debit card frozen like when i moved to new york i told my my bank is currently an arkansas bank which i should uh-huh. i should just get out of that but before I moved away, I was like, I'm moving to New York City. So you will see transactions in New York City. And then they immediately froze my debit card at my, the first use of it. <laughs> immediately. They were like, this is weird. This, this is what is I'm so saying. Weird. They don't, <laughs> they're so bad at this. Yeah, they're just horrible at their whole deal. Um, they, these, are, um, these are fine advice. They just might not work. But yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, here's a good one, Sean. Uh, wall plugs are fucking weird out there. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be ready for that. Yeah, bring your wall plugs. Wall thingy. plugs get fucking wild oh man uh, i have like a I, at some point i bought you. some charger that came with like a seven country adapter and i have had it sitting in the closet for years and years and i'll finally get to take it out i'm excited about that yeah i um, do some adapting that's great very adaptable and, and yeah i think just everyone look everyone eats food from what i understand in, in mm-hmm. other places mm-hmm. and uh I, I like to ask people where should i eat and then you go eat that thing and then that's how you make friends and that's nice. if you're at a conference you're like hey man i'm gonna go eat at a place Y'all want to eat that place with me, and then you make friends. I and think Sean has idea. no problem making friends. Sean, like, hang on, hang on. Sean, this is a pep talk. Comments, compliments save for next week. We have to do two two of these. Remember, oh, we have to do oh, compliments man. next week. Um, but I so Ezra's Ezra's gr- advice is really great. The best way to make friends is to offer to eat something or to just call your banker and brag about your upcoming trips. There you go. Two solid ways to make brag friends. about your life to your banker. Yeah. Um, I hope you have a great trip, Sean. I, mean, I think it was very exciting for you. And uh, yes, if you happen safe. to be. Um, your trip happens to be to the Netherlands in early July, mid July. You know, let me know. We'll, we can go eat something in Amsterdam. Or if you like live in Amsterdam and your trip is to Portland, Oregon, hit me up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. also possible. Oh, it never occurred to me that an international trip could be to America. <laughs> to them, the plugs yeah. here are weird, guys. <laughs> Wait, were we the weird plugs all along? Yes, yes. Oh, wow. We, you know, this is a show about learning. I think we've had a lot. Big international understanding now. All right. We have to get going. Congratulations on your trip, Sean. Thank you for donating. And we'll talk more about you next week. And we really appreciate everybody who donates to the show. And I promise you, Sean, I feel at least triple guilt. I feel much more guilt than you could ever imagine. Yeah, if man. you want to become a meat buddy, go to metreon.com. You can support the show and keep it floating down the tracks even when it doesn't really want to be because it doesn't want to watch the princess diaries um thank you sean thank you everybody all right that's it we'll talk to you guys next week thank you so much for listening to the pod send us email and feedback podcast at read-weep.com you can also find the show on youtube youtube.com slash alex falcon we have a comment section going it's pretty active really enjoying that anthony thank you so much mm-hmm. for hanging out today buddy yeah, this is a lot of fun. I got to go drug some cats to take All us to the right. vet now. So yeah, wish not me an luck. appointment. That's just, he's having a day. <laughs> he's just That's his entertainment for the day. Uh, Hunter, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, hey, thank you. Always good chat with you. And Ezra, thanks yeah. for uh, being on the show since uh, as, almost as long as Sean. It's, uh, uh, thanks for picking this movie, Alex. I, mm. I had a good time. I, I had a good too. time. I'm glad. I, I do think that Princess time. Diaries should be the movie that anytime someone goes in and they're not old enough to see the movie, <laughs> they, they immediately the shuffle Diaries. you off into a small screen room and you watch the Princess Diaries. There are worse states. There are worse states. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.